Bibles and good uh, turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 I'm reading from the King James Version and also we're going to read from the book of Judges chapter 6 verse 7 to 10 King James Version and this morning we are continuing on the culture of the supernatural the culture of the supernatural and the Bible reads in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 behold I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion everybody said this is the supernatural church it is designed by God for signs and wonders hallelujah judges chapter 6 verse 7 to 10 and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them thus saith the Lord God of Israel I brought you up from Egypt and, and brought you forth out of the house of bondage and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave them, gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not, fear not, fear not. The gods of the Amorites. In whose land you dwell fear not I am the Lord your God is saying to you fear not but you have not obeyed my voice father in the name of Jesus we thank you for your word it is anointed we bless you in Jesus name amen you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord and so uh, I, I want to uh, start by saying When most of us were coming out of bondage, it's almost like the devil doesn't want to let us go. He will not just let you go. And most of us went through this season, I call the devil taking back what he gave you in the world. Because the only reason why he was giving it to you is to keep you. Once you break up with him, you start to see things that you've never seen before. They want the car back. They, 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 they want you to get your own place. Uh, yeah, they, 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 it's like they throw the whole bucket at you everything you find yourself that right back where you started and you got to start over but thanks be to God it is a new start it is a new beginning old things must pass away pass away and all things has to become new so as I read this text I realized that when the people of God gets got delivered from Egypt Pharaoh didn't want to let them go God, God had to do a miracle. He had to do several miracles. He had to intervene supernaturally to release his people. And sometimes it's not that people don't want to come out of bondage. It's not that you don't know you need to get out. But it's difficult when it's time to walk away. So the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 19, but I, in, in the living Bible translation, but I know that God, God said, Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to free my people. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go except under heavy pressure. God will send a word to deliver you, but he knows. 
that you're not going to just walk away without some heavy pressure. And so here again, I realize that how the enemy set up his camp is systematic, strategic. Because you have several checkpoints to go through before you can walk away clear. I call them checkpoints. Because the first checkpoint, the Bible says, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but there's principalities, there's powers, there's rulers of darkness, there's spiritual wickedness in high place. All of these are ranks. Checkpoints. Because you might, you might get through the principality and you think that you, you, you're out the door. But now you got to deal with the powers. And sometimes it will make you wonder if you're really saved. Because it seems like you haven't gotten to the root of the thing that still keep you in bondage. Because we haven't passed all the checkpoints yet. Because the ones that's closest to you are the little minions that's in your house speaking in your ears. The enemy has no reason to send a principality in your house just to deal with you. He, he, this, this regions. But there are little, little, little minions that will be right in your house. And they're the ones. Usually you have to get rid of first the little voices. Checkpoints. And after that, after you have, after you have to deal with all the spiritual things, you've got to deal with the physical checkpoints. You got to get back your identity. You have to, you have to get over that thing. That Because one of the things when the enemy is taking things from you, he takes away your identity. Because if you don't know who you are, it's hard for you to get delivered from anything. So one of the things the enemy will take from you is your identity. In the whole process, that's one of the key ingredients that he has to put in the whole process. It's to take your identity. And then there's a relationship checkpoint. All of a sudden you decide to change the way you're living and all your friends disappear. And you have to be willing to keep going. And said, if you want to leave, you, it's okay. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I'm not going to make because you broke up with me. I'm going to turn back and take my hand off the plow. Relationship checkpoints. Because sometimes that will really test how, how saved you are. Because you know, sometimes some friendship and relationship can have strongholds. And you have to get over that checkpoint. And so you thought that you're saved, but all of a sudden you run into such and such and such and your weakness kicks in. Oh Lord of mercy. And you realize that you didn't get over that checkpoint yet. This is your first look at this place right here. Because I've never stopped to measure how much stronghold this person had in my life. So I had to get over this checkpoint. When I got saved, there's some people that I was hiding from. <laughs> hiding from because it's almost like people, it's like they know what button to press. And I'm getting my healing in that area. And I know I'm not fully healed there yet. So I don't expose myself. <sighs> it's called blocking the number. I'm helping somebody. You got to get over the financial checkpoint. Because all of a sudden... They were paying your rent because you decide to give your life to Jesus. Now you have to go live in the shelter. They were helping you with your bills. All of a sudden because you decide to go a different route and repent and live right for God. All of a sudden they don't want to give you a ride no more. So now you have to figure out, okay, now I'm saved but I'm broke. I got to figure out how I'm going to get over this place because... I can't keep going back to the same person to depend on that situation like I was before because it always cost me something. 
I have to compromise, I have to give up something, I have to make myself vulnerable to the point where I have to do things I don't really want to do. The financial checkpoint, the identity checkpoint, the relationship checkpoint on the financial checkpoint. And this is why you can see where God has to intervene sometimes. Because even though you know you the right thing and you want to do the right thing, God has to come and say, I have to put some, some pressure on Pharaoh. So he has to let my people go. Oh God Almighty. And so, and so uh, you, there, there must be some force that is applied to your freedom. And Satan will not submit to your intellect. He will not submit to your degree. He will not submit to who you live. But he has to submit to the power of God. This is not an intellectual warfare. And so God, and so, so Psalm 66 verse 3 says unto, uh, the psalmist says, say unto God, uh, he says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto you. Bible so we can't even we can't go into a strong man's house unless we we have some kind of power. Because to bind a strong man, you have to be stronger than the strong man. So you can't just be 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 be, uh, be without any kind of authority, any kind of power. I'm, I'm talking about a superior power, and we understand that there's no power that's superior to the power of God. And so, and so you have to go in with power to bind the strong man. We can say all day, the devil is, I'm going to take back everything that he has for me and what he's taking back. But you have to have power. And this is why Paul says, listen, don't, 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 don't get this uh, 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 twisted here. Paul says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in Where's my class? But in? Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, 20, he says, but if, I, but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt that the kingdom of God is come upon you. The finger is of God is the ultimate power of God. The ultimate power of God. And so there is for the believer, we have to ask ourselves, where is this power? Where is this power? Where is this power? Where is this power? Ephesians 6.10 will tell you where this power is. And Paul said, finally, my brethren, be strong in your job. Be strong in who you're connected to. He said, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. In the armor of God. Brothers and sisters. Is simply Christ. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The shield of faith. Ah. The sword of the spirit. The belt of truth. Your feet shot with the preparation of peace. Of the peace. Of peace. Simply it is Christ. That he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, powers, rulers. Spiritual wickedness in high places. This power is found in Christ. When God releases power to the believer, when God releases power to the believer, hallelujah, it comes in the form of potential power. It's come in the form of potential. In other words, the power is there, 
But if you don't, if you don't tap into it, it's only there. A spring on the car pastor would just be a spring until there was pressure applied to it. When the pressure applies to a spring, then you see the potential that's in the spring is spring right back. Some of you are sitting here right now because God has given you potential. And, and you've come back from so many things and you didn't realize what's in you until the pressure came. Oh God Almighty. I wish somebody would testify this morning. I, I wish somebody would testify that, 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 that you came back you, 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 you saw what was in you when the pressure came. And the more the way it came, you realize how much more you have inside of you. Oh, I wish. I, 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 let me just testify for myself. Oh, God. I've prayed prayer that I've never prayed before. When I've dealt with situations that I've never dealt with before. You, you all not hear what I'm saying. And, and, so, and, and, and so this is when the pressure comes. It reveals hidden abilities. Things that you, you didn't even know you could pray like that. You didn't know you have longevity in your spirit like that. When the thing that, what, that is compressing you and oppressing you, you can't shake it. And you realize that you can't talk about it. You can't, you, you're doing all kind of stuff, but I got to stay in a certain posture in my mind. So, Pastor, uh, uh, we, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible says, God has given us the power to get wealth. But there's people in the church still broke. Christians still broke. Why? Because power is in potential. And if you, it's hidden ability. And it's when the pressure comes, you realize that, look, I can go to school. I can get an education. I can pay my own bill. All of us, all the time, I thought I needed you to pay my bill. But when the pressure comes, I realize that I could have been doing this all along. All of a sudden, you have the aspiration for a PhD. And before the pressure comes, you didn't realize how much you could have studied. How committed you are, how dedicated you are, how ambitious you are, come on. But sometimes the devil will send some people to tell you that you're not good enough. And you need me. But I come to tell you, you got hidden potential. You have a hidden ability. And sometimes when God sends pressure, it's intentional. It's to expose something that you already could have done. But God has to switch up the thing so you can see what's already in you. Oh God Almighty, somebody ought to give God praise in this place. He said, God, I be all I've given you power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. So when I hear believers complaining about the devil, I say you haven't tapped into the potential that God has already given you. He already given you power over all the powers of the enemy. So I ain't no devil. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on, look at you and say, nothing going to stop me this season. Come on, look at your neighbor and provoke and say, look, you can't be stopped this season. What you're going through this season, God is only trying to let you realize that you're better than people said you are. You're better than you're convinced that you are. You can do more than you thought you could have. God is trying to push you into destiny. Oh, God Almighty, somebody ought to give. Oh, I, I'm going to help somebody right here. God said, Joshua, right. everywhere you put your foot, the sole of your foot, everywhere you put your foot open fire. If you go to Nigeria, come on, y'all not hear what I'm saying. If you go to Liberia, if you go to Sierra Leone, if you go to Jamaica, wherever you put your feet, God said, I have given you. I have already Giving you, oh, somebody ought to give God praise. Oh, give God glory. I don't care what Hittite is in, in the land, I don't care who Jebusite.
parasite is in the lap. I don't care what parasite is in the lap. All I know when God gives me something, I got to believe that I receive. Oh. Oh, somebody ought to give God glory because this season the game has just been shifted come on the playbook has just been rewritten come on I'm not coming by might I'm not coming by power but I'm coming by the Spirit of God somebody ought to give God glory I realize that everybody can't help me to get into my Canaan everybody can't help me get over Jordan but I come to tell somebody that there will be no man that will stand there will be no devil that will stand come on somebody open your mouth I said this season I don't care what giant is standing over my blessing some oh God Almighty I come to free somebody this morning you think the Canaanite is a problem no that they work in your favor the Canaanites over there they're just guarding your inheritance and because God planned to be to bless you so good plant your bless you so big he could have sent ordinary people to guard your blessing y'all not hear what I'm saying he has to put some giant over your blessing but you can't be afraid of the giant because what God gave you you gotta realize that it's somebody give him glory come on Zach. I said the devil has to send giants to guard my blessing I'm not afraid of the Canaanites I'm glad they're over there because if, if, if they weren't there somebody brought the Midianites would have taken my spoil but God said I gotta send some big people to watch over your big blessing but it belongs to you come on somebody give God glory Oh, I can't even get into this. I can't even get into this. Come on, come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Come on, bless him this morning. Somebody bless him this morning. Come on, give him glory. I come to encourage somebody that everything is working together for your good. You're serving a God who know the end of a thing from the beginning. When it start, it's already finished. Come on, somebody. Give God glory. And thank you for the giants. Thank you for the Canaanites. I've been through some things that has burnt my ministry. That has given me life. I got something to live for. Give God glory in this place. blessing no more devil the bigger the battle come on the hot of the bottom the sweeter the victory the more the devil guard my stuff Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning but this season you are bold as a lion you're not going back down from the Canaanites thank you mr. Canaanite for molesting me thank you mr. Canaanite for backstabbing me thank you mr. Canaanite for leaving me out to try thank you mr. Canaanite because now I know how to put somebody up now I know how to deliver somebody give God glory for your Canaanites oh yeah 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 master come on bless him come on bless him come on we gotta get out of here you gotta get part two we gotta get out of here oh my kushaka my son come on look at you there is a the supernatural it is required come on say it is required come on come on it is required come on it is required come on it is required Come on, the media nights is about to be expired. Come on, every time you get ready to get to your blessing. Come on, the media nights come. My 
God pastor there are the people that come in the middle the Midianites they're the middlemen you sow your seed you water your plant and they come in the middle before you reap your harvest and they don't come in the daytime they come at midnight they come in the middle of the process the media nights somebody ought to hear what I'm saying but I hear God said me say pastor tell my people that weeping is only in the door for the night but I don't care what they take in the night come on your joy your joy is still coming in the morning My joy is still coming in the morning. Come on, somebody. I'm looking at this thing. Jesus said, the day I, I must work, do the work of my father. Because the night cometh when no man should be working. So when I'm sleeping, I should be resting. I'm under demonic attack. In my rest time because the the plan is to take away my sleep and when daybreak come I'm too tired to even pick my grapes to, I'm too tired to go pick my grapes to get my harvest because she want to keep me up all night but God said me to tell you he gives I need a drum roll in here. He gives his beloved. Come on, look at it. Come on, say, devil, you're not going to disturb my sleep. Another night. I'm not going to worry about something that God has already finished. I'm not going to worry about something. Lose sleep over something that God has already finished. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, look out, devil, I'm coming. I'm coming, I'm coming, open fire is coming. Come on, we're coming to Nigeria. Come on, we're coming to Liberia. Come on, Ghana. Now, come on, y'all. Now, hear me. Europe, here we come. Come on, come on. Yeah. New York, here we come. Come on, Houston, here we come. Dallas, here we come, Dallas. We're coming, we're coming. And what everything the devil have locked up. Come on, that says Jesus on it. We come to claim it. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, we're coming. The gates of hell is not going to prevail. I said the gates of hell will not prevail. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, say, look at, say, say it's, it's supernatural is not difficult. All you got to do is believe. Can you believe? Yes, you can. Can you see it before it happened? Yes, you can. God will never ask you to do something He didn't give you the ability to do. Yeah. It's not difficult. All you got to do is believe. There is somebody here, I'm going to say this because the Lord told me to say it. There's somebody here who came here specifically this morning to be healed. Somebody. And here's the criteria. This is the, a person that before you left your home, you said that I'm going to the house of God today to get my healing. 
I want you to run through this altar. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad if it's not you. Because God, he said to Mary, he said to Martha, he said, look, I'm doing this so that the Son of Man will be glorified. And as I was there in the meditation, I said, God, you know how it is. People are shy there. And he said, son, if somebody wants a gallon of milk, you run out. Baby's crying. You need a gallon of milk. And you, went, you go to Walmart to pick it up. You're not going to be embarrassed to buy it. You're not going to be shameful to feed your baby. You're not going to be shameful to buy that milk. People can look at you all day long. You block them out because your baby need milk. It's a need. And this is why God said, I supply all your needs. Not your wants. All your needs. So if you come this morning and say, God, I left my house to come here this morning to be healed. If you're in this house, I want you to run up here quickly because God is going to heal you instantly. 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 There's somebody, maybe there's somebody in line. He didn't tell me if it was going to be in the service or it's going to be 11 o'clock. He said, just say this, son. That's all he told me. He said, say it. He didn't say, the people go to here, or it's going to be there. He said, all you got to do is say it. I didn't even remember to ask him. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. I need, I need some, I need some, some, some ushers. Get behind her. Don't even touch her. Don't even put your hand on her. The only healer in this room is Jesus Christ. The only healer in here is God Almighty. And as you say, Lord, so that they may know that you sent me. I'm praying now, God, so that they know that you told me as, as your man servant that this woman of God is healed instantly. instantly. This woman of God is it's healed instantly. Instantly, instantly, instantly. Cancer will not be a portion. That report, we nullify that report right now. The report, the only report you will believe is the report of the Lord. And God didn't, is not going to do it. He's already done it. God has already done it. Pastor, come look closer, but just don't, just don't make her fall. Don't make her fall. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Come on, stretch your hands towards her. Stretch your hands towards her. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the expression of your love. Thank you for your daughter. You're intentional about her. You know her by name. What the enemy meant for evil, you have just turned it around for good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come on, just thank him, open fire. Thank you. It's already done. 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 Do you receive it, woman of God? You receive it? Come on, say it loud. I receive it. Say thank you, Jesus. You can exhale now. You can exhale. Your latter days is going to be greater. Oh, shine.
a weight just left off of you. A burden just, he says, my yoke is easy. And he says, my burdens are light. I feel the refreshing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon you right now. Your countenance has just changed. You just got to go home and look in the mirror. You just got to look at the light of God. God has changed your countenance. You can breathe again. You can breathe again. All your plans just change. All oh, everything's a shift. Now you're making better plans. Different plans. God said he just took an urgency off of you. He just took an urgency off of you. And he gave you more time. Whoa, come on somebody, give God praise. God said he gave you more time. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Testify, woman of God, testify. Hallelujah. 